Well, hello, seventh period. How are you? Yes, this intro is rather strange, but I realized that today I have a meeting and I may or may not be done by the time class starts. So someone's got to help you get your second part of the study guide ready. And I guess that someone is me here and now. So um, go ahead and get your papers out from yesterday. We started a, when you were this gum, we started making a study guide for your nine week exam. We ended the day talking about intercepts and we were gonna start back with that right now. So pause the video and give everyone, give, give everyone a chance to get their stuff out. And then you can resume the video while I stand, uh, rather sit here staring off rather dumbly and pause now go. Surely someone pause it and they're not watching me talk to myself for no reason. And we're back. I'm sure everyone has their paper and pencil out and uh, everything they started yesterday. So let's talk about what intercepts are, shall we? Usually it takes me two tries to get the whiteboard to work. So let's see. Yep, it's going to take me another try. One second. Clear that out. Stop share. This is gonna be a rather uncut, unpolished video, so I apologize of the streamer aspect to it where I don't have time to edit. I'm just flying through the steps. Okay, so here we go. So what are we talking about? We're talking about intercepts, sure. Okay, so basically, here's what intercepts are. This is just an overview. You got your axes, and then you'll have some sort of a line so here's a function, there it is, ta-da, okay. So what we're talking about here, intercepts. So we've got two intercepts here. One there and one there. Let me move that one up just a smidge, okay. So we've got this one, which is the X intercept. Oh, this one right here, which is the Y intercept. I, you might be inferring why, how the names came to be. So the X intercept is where your function intercepts the X axis. And your Y intercept, that line is horrible. And your y-intercept is where your function intercepts the y-axis. Ta-da! Um, this in and of itself is not what you're being asked to understand. As an algebra student, you're being asked to understand whether or not, I'm sorry, how to represent this in function form or in function notation. So keep in mind that usually function notation is in the form of f of x. Like the function, the line depends on whatever your x is. So uh, in this case right here, so let's talk about our uh, draw box. So let's talk about the x intercept here for a second. So the x intercept is where x actually has a value and the y equals zero. See, this whole thing, so if this was at say, I don't know, one, two, three, four, okay. So this is four, so when the function is at four, it's equal to zero. Okay, so there's your x-intercept function notation. You're actually gonna have a value for x, but the output is zero. The output connects to the x-axis at, at, at zero, the y-value is zero, okay? So the x-intercept in this particular case, which I just made up, is four comma zero. There's your x-intercept. And x-intercepts will always have a zero in the y-value because they're not up or down, they're right on the, the x-axis. But if we're looking at the y-intercept, this guy over here, the y-intercept happens to be when x is equal to zero. So 
So in this case, the x value is zero, and we actually end up with a y value. So the x-intercept in this guy is zero, negative two. So that's just a quick overview of what intercepts are, how they get written in function notation, and what you need to be on the lookout for, okay? So the lesson I sent you on Khan is just the very basic of, hey, can you see the intercepts? So let's take a look at that real quick. So here's the problem. And you're gonna notice our intercepts are pretty easy to spot. One is here. And the other one is over here. And this lesson, really all you have to do is like read the graph. So you might notice that this guy is at zero, 100. And he's connected to the y-axis, so you go to the y-intercept and you go 0, 100. But by the way, if you want to know how to get between those two boxes, just the tab key. Uh, and then this other guy down here is at negative 250, 0. So negative 250. Uh, yeah. Hooray, go team. So this is a very basic, basic, basic understanding of what intercepts are. This is not really the kind of question you're being asked on the assessment. <sighs> yeah, this is basically the same thing. So this, so if I wanna put some dots on it, y-intercept is here, the x-intercept is here, and you can just, now x-intercepts always have a y-value of zero and y-intercepts always have an x-value of zero, so you can fill those in ahead of time if you want. So the x-intercept here is at negative 40, zero, and the y-intercept is at zero, Ooh, looks like a 15. Okay, so that lesson really, not really that complex. So let's talk about what it's gonna look like for you on your assessment. Ooh. Nope, that's not what I want. Okay, back to this, so let's see. Okay, so um, you know it might be better if I actually pulled up a graph. One second. Okay, this should work. All right, so here's a basic piece of graph paper. So let me go ahead and make a function for us. Make some dots. So let's say the function goes starts here. One, two, one, two, three, four. One, two, one, two, three, four. One, two, one, two, three, four. Sorry, I'm just counting out the slope in my head. Sometimes not so in my head. Anyway, so now let me draw a line. <laughs> that's not bad for first try thank you very much as i say that myself okay so here's our line oh you know what? i should have made it easier hang on first of all, we're doing axes here right it would make way more sense for me to put one on both let's put one here one two three four one one, two, three, four, one, two. One, two, three, four, one, two. One, two, three, four, one, two. All right, this should be better. Put a line through them. Okay, that's better. Where was it? Okay, so 
you're going to pose the question, and it'll be one of these two things. So you might say, E. That's hard to read. Hang on. That's a little bit better. So which equation describes the x-intercept? That's one way you might get asked. And can I copy that? I don't think so. Same thing for the y-intercept. Okay, so now I'm gonna give you four options and see if you can pick out which one it is. So let's go with A is um, F of two equals zero. B F of four equals zero. C on now. F of zero equals maybe two. Oh, I guess I should have. That should be a negative two. Okay. And D, F of zero equals four. Okay, I'm gonna tell you right now that two of these make sense for our questions. What were our questions? So I'll show you. That's a question. And that's a question. I'm telling you, one goes, that, now two that are bogus that don't make any sense at all. And then one is the equation for the x-intercept and one is the equation for the y-intercept, just saying. So right now, you should probably pause it and see if you can figure out which two make sense and which two just don't. And now we're back. I'm sure somebody paused it in time and gave everyone a chance to get their answers ready. Oh no, did you need to pause it again? Okay, too fast, all right. Pause it now and see if you can come up with the right answers. Two are good, two are bogus. Surely you pause it by now. Don't look at each other, look at me. Someone needs to come up here and pause it. Thank you. Okay, pause it now, and then we'll come back to it. And we're back. And I'm probably sounding like a complete idiot, but that's okay. All right, so which one of these makes sense? Um, hmm. Okay, so the parentheses, oh, that's hard to see. The parentheses are going to have the x value, and then what it's worth is your y. So um, negative 2, 0. Oh, that's here. There's one of them. Four zero is here. Be a different color. No, not that. That's not it. Zero negative two is down here. That's not it. I guess zero four is here. Yep, that's this one. So there they are. So 
So there's zero four. There's negative two zero. So our x intercept is right here and our y intercept is right here. So that's the intercepts in function notation. Mm. The next question is one of these like, I'm not, I mean, guys, you're expected to, be, to have to really think about some of these questions and I don't want to rob you of that chance to think by spoiling everything. So mm, I'm a bit of a quandary as to how much I show you on this next one. Mm. Okay, just a quick you quick word on how to use function notation. I guess we'll, we'll review this in the, the neighborhood of evaluating functions. So let's just say, okay, so just as a refresher on how to evaluate functions, let's say you had something like, oh, I don't know, um, the money earned, depends on hours worked and you're making, I don't know, 12 bucks an hour. I don't think you'd have any sort of a bonus. But let's say that every night you get, I don't know, 20 bucks in tips. So if it's made up job, There's your tips. There's your pay rate. This is hours. That's your working. And there it is again. And this is the money earned. It's supposed to be a dollar sign. Anyway, so if I ask you to solve. this your job is to understand that i'm telling you that you work now for five hours that's what that is five hours so you take your five and you put it everywhere that h was so if you work for five hours that'd be five times 12 which is 60 plus the 20 dollar tips you'd make So apparently if you make $20 in tips and you make 12 bucks an hour and you work for five hours, you make 80 bucks. That being said, there's, there's a real thinking problem where you have to be able to evaluate functions like that and really be careful about how you fill in the answer because it's one of those interactive ones where you have to drag boxes and drop them into the right spot. So that should be a very clever test of your skills. There's actually two that are real thinkers with regards to function notation. You could argue three, okay. So that's how you evaluate functions. There is a practice lesson on this. I think you pick that really, really quickly. See this? So it's the exact same thing I was just doing. So because they put a negative five here, you're gonna put the negative five in for the X. So that'd be six times a negative five plus 100, so get your inner skills out. 
That'd be six times five, negative five would be negative 30 plus 100, which is 70. Yay. Okay, so that's evaluating functions. What's next? The next is graphing, where it's really similar to all the packets we've done. You're gonna get some sort of a story or a scenario and you're expected to graph points. Mm -hmm. So I'll just say, So there, I said it. Be ready to graph your own points. Let me give you a story problem. Mm -hmm. That's twice. Yeah, I'm just looking at the two graphs. So it's going to be very, very specific as to what you need to do. Just give you a little warning. When you're graphing all these points, you can't think of it like partial credit. Think, oh, well, I'm, maybe I missed one. No, they all have to be on the graph. They all have to be in the right spots or it's not going to count. Okay. You'll have one near the end where you have to translate it like a translate it being a story into a function notation equation. We've done a lot of that this, uh, this nine weeks. I'll make one up here in a second. But before that, we should talk about two things. Okay, two big words. So there's domain. And there's range. Okay, so I think it's really important. Everyone in here has a firm understanding of what we're talking about. So the domain is your X values, uh, which means it's the independent. My handwriting is awesome. So uh, it's the X values is the independent variable. Meanwhile, the range is your Y values. That's your dependent variable. Oh, hush, some of your handwriting is this bad and you use a pencil. Dependent. Oh, I guess I'll say uh, the X values are your inputs. And the Y values are your outputs. So twice, you're gonna be given some sort of a story problem and you're simply asked to figure out what are the domain and the range. Okay, so they will give you a story. Neutral color, okay. And you've got to figure out the domain and you've got to figure out the range yourself. Mm 
Okay. I guess the last thing I can possibly give you to chew on and study and look over. would be taking a relationship like a story and then writing it into function notation correctly. And I'm just reading this one more time to make sure I'm not missing something. Okay, so let's just say Oh, I don't know to keep it simple. Okay, we've done these in the past. So like, remember Gennaro? Gennaro is earning $3 per problem he solved. And that problem of fun thing. Well, if you had to write that in function notation, as an equation where I said that um, so the money earned we'll say that's E and say the problems you solved We'll say the problems you solve was n, okay? So the number of problems solved is n and the money is he earned is e. So you would say that the money earned depends on the number of problems he solved. Because he makes three dollars per problem, that'd be three n, and that's it. Okay. So you'll be given a story and you'll be given some function notations and it's really your job just to figure out which one matches the story. I think I'm safe, I feel safe saying that without giving you too much of a hint. But that really kind of concludes the study guide. You're gonna have 20 questions, is it still 20? Yep, it's still 20. 20 questions, you have one class period, it's gonna fly by. Uh, you're going to spend a lot of time going over your own, um, your, oh man, I lost my train of thought there for a second. You'll spend a lot of time doing all of your exponents and uh, you want to say, and then you'll save some time when you get to the identifying functions from their graphs and things. And this towards the end is a little time consuming. I'll tell you now. At first and second period when they watched this when they took this rather they uh they were struggling with time i had a couple at the very end they were just having a guess and this test is not meant to be guessed on so i guess i'm gonna leave you that feel free to rewind this and play it at your leisure and that means watch it as many times as you need to to be prepared so like i said uh, I might make it back today, but my matey might go all afternoon. I don't know. So until I'm sure, this is a nice backup plan to finish your study guides. Your test is tomorrow. Be prepared. Good luck. And I'll see you next time.